Our next guest says fewer than one-fifth of consumers believe now is a good time to buy. Fannie Mae Chief Economist Doug Duncan joins us. It, it seems to be a fairly persistent sentiment. When do you think that might turn around, Doug? Well, that'll depend on house prices and interest rates. Um, we expect that the Fed will cut a couple of times. That will probably, uh, at the margins, bring mortgage rates down a bit, although uh, the uh, tenure versus the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is not in lockstep. But we do expect that there'll be some additional decline if the Fed does uh, as expected. Um, that will improve things a bit, but um, just from an historic perspective, we're at one of the most unaffordable time periods that there's been in the, in the certainly in the post-2000 uh, time period. So we have a ways to go. Uh, the, the other issue that's out there is in our portfolio, 88% of the people that have a loan are under 6% and 81% are under 5%. Um, there's a, pretty, a significant share of those folks that are unlikely to let those mortgages go anytime soon. Yeah, so the interesting thing is I, I was having lunch yesterday with a mortgage broker from New England who said she has just been inundated with client requests for um, her services on mortgages. So where is that activity coming from? It's, uh, it's refinancing of people that took a mortgage uh, after, say, the 1st of July in 2022 when the Fed started tightening pretty significantly and mortgage rates went up very rapidly so anybody that has taken out a mortgage since that time period may well be in a position to uh, refinance. And we, we actually track that. We have what we call the rally, the refinance application level index. That is a measure of the flow of application activity. And uh, in the last two months, as rates have come back down, you've seen, or two weeks, I'm sorry, uh, there's been a big jump in the applications for refinancing. So according to the notes that I got from, from you guys, the, the, you, here you've got the conforming loan balances falling slightly to 6.54 percent. I mean, it's down like one one hundredth of a percent. It's, it's basically flat. <laughs> but but is, are these tiny moves enough after seeing interest rates high for this period of time? Is that enough to get people who've been chomping at the bit to say, fine, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now? Are you seeing that? Well, if you go back 30 days or so ago, you, you would have seen rates up closer to 7%. Mm. So dropping 50 basis points, a pretty big drop, uh, and will bring a bunch of people into the market. And, and if the Fed does as we expect and rates come down further, we would expect that refinancing activity to continue to pick up. Bearing in mind that 2021 and the first half of 2022 were very high levels of refinancing themselves, and those folks won't be back in the market for a while. Doug, you mentioned that uh, mortgage rates don't move in lockstep with, say, the 10-year Treasury yield, but it seems the gap is, is higher than uh, historically uh, it has been on average. There's a lot of factors, I guess, behind that, but some of that is about assumptions about, you know, prepayments and refinancings or maybe uh, just sort of bank willingness to get in the, into the market. What do you think is driving it, and what can we expect? Well, those things that you mentioned are part of it. Part of it, too, is the Fed's portfolio. They are still the single biggest holder of mortgage-backed securities in the world. The banking sector as a group holds more than the Fed does. But the, as the Fed is letting that run off, one of the questions is who replaces the Fed uh, in holding those the new issue mortgage-backed securities? So there is that uncertainty about who will step in and at what rate. And of course, as you mentioned, at the same time as rates are coming down, it changes the probabilities of people refinancing existing mortgages. And that is a risk. And so that means spreads will stay wider to account for that additional risk. 